Mohamed Tinubu departs Abuja for Paris on his first official trip as president of Nigeria. I feel like a tiger ready to chase away criminals from Nigeria. Newly decorated acting IGP Kade Egbetoku reveals. And former Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefele challenges his continued detention and sues the DSS. And also coming up on Politics HQ tonight, Rwandan genocide fugitive Kayu Shema to seek asylum in South Africa. And Malin Junta files espionage complaint against UN peacekeeping mission. Tonight on Politics HQ, I will be joined by retired Brigadier General Sani Usman, retired and former director. It's the, he's the former director of the Army Public Relations. He joins us live from Abuja at the Lagos night. And also in Abuja, I have retired Commodore Abimbola Ayuba, International Security Risk Management Consultant. I am Benga Aborowa. Stay with us, Politics HQ. We'll be right back. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Monday appointed new service chiefs after ending the 10 years of the previous service chiefs. The president also appointed a new acting inspector general of police with Malam Nuhu Rabadu also named as their national security advisor. The new security appointments have come three weeks after the president was inaugurated. President Tinubu also announced the new Comptroller general for the customs issues of banditry and kidnapping are still problems in some parts of the country. And with the new service chiefs being some of Nigeria's most experienced generals, there are great expectations for Nigeria's security and also the menace of kidnapping. Now, joining me tonight to make sense of all of this and to have an in-depth analysis of the appointment and the prospect uh, for security under the Tinubu presidency, I have retired Brigadier General Sani Usman, uh, the former director of Army Public Relations, who joins us live from Abuja. And I also have the pleasure of having Commodore Abimbola Ayuba, International Security Risk Management Consultant, also joining from the Federal Capital Territory of Abuja. A warm welcome to you, gentlemen, and thanks for joining us in Politics HQ tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'd like to start with Commodore Ayuba. How would you assess the multifaceted nature of insecurity in Nigeria today, taking into account factors such as insurgency, banditry, and communal clashes. Where do we stand in terms of security as at today? Thank you very much, Brenda. Well, uh, coming from uh, where we were in 2010 uh, and up to today, uh, one could easily say that uh, we have made a significant uh, uh, strides in uh, uh, the efforts of uh, the armed forces of Nigeria to mitigate the impact of uh, terrorism and violent extremism uh, all across the country. Uh, you will recall that uh, places like uh, uh, Boronu, uh, some parts of Yobe, some parts of Adamawa were being seriously afflicted by uh, the impact of uh, uh, terrorist uh, uh, Boko Haram specifically, and later on the Islamic State uh, for West Africa uh, group. Uh, but today, uh, you will uh, observe that uh, most of their power bases have been uh, severely degraded, uh, in, in more, some cases totally uh, decimated. And of course, uh, looking back, I can simply say that we're in a better space than we were now about 10 years ago. Uh, but there's still a lot to do because uh, once the conditions that, uh, that promote terrorism 
are not totally eliminated, there is the possibility of a resurgence, and that is undesirable. And this is where we, as a nation, need to focus on uh, moving on from where we are today. Thank you. Thank you, Commodore Ayuba. I'd like to bring in uh, General Usman into the conversation. Now, General, with the recent dismissal of the Chief of Defence Staff, Service Chiefs, Inspector General of Police, and the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Customs, and the re appointment of fresh uh, blood into the system. How do you anticipate this will impact the overall security apparatus in Nigeria? Are there potential risk and opportunities associated with such changes of personnel at the highest uh, echelon of the military brass? Thank you very much. I would rather not use the time about dismissal. Mm. Uh, these are changes that are well anticipated because given tradition, whenever there is change of government, you would like to bring in hands that you can walk up. And more so, uh, most of the security chiefs that were, you know, uh, retired or relieved their appointment, uh, they have spent uh, not less than two, two more than two years including the army staff who uh, came uh, much later after the death of his uh, predecessor and uh, during the unfortunate plane crash in Kaduna. Mm. So when you look at this, something that is routine and expected and normal, and the uh, issue of risk, I don't think if there is any risk, but rather I will talk about uh, opportunities, opportunities, given the... Now, the quality of the people, yes, the quality of people that are appointed, right from the National Security Advisor up to the, uh, you know, the, the new controller general uh, custom. And uh, personally, these are people that have known and uh, given their antecedents, the well, uh, great wealth of experience and um, in the military service and of security service, in various as devils, they have served the nation. I think uh, it was a right decision. And uh, what, uh, what is uh, most important here is uh, to see to what extent they will bring these developments of experience to, uh, to bear on the security challenges that we have been uh, experiencing. Uh, like just now, my uh, um, senior just said, uh, Commodore Abimbola, uh, beyond the insurgency and terrorism, you know, the security challenges kept on mutating and transforming into uh, various shapes and forms. Take, for instance, we have not had the, uh, the issue of kidnapping and banditry, but eventually it becomes a problem in the society. And now we are living in the 21st century and the first industrial revolution. So the issue of um, uh, internet of and what have you has brought about mm -hmm. another aspect which is cyber crime and so so there are so many issues that are, that, that are bedeviling the country security wise but most importantly is the issue of the visible tendencies among the components of uh, Nigerian society especially is experienced during the last electioneering campaign which a large extent also has corresponding impact on the security of this nation. So uh, there is high expectation, high hope, for not just only the security chiefs, but the government. And I uh, have been uh, absolute confident they will deliver. More so, the government is so determined. President Commander in Chief has shown, the, uh, has demonstrated security of uh, purpose, and he has a very big over the affairs of this country. So automatically, uh, given their wealth of experience and the strategic directions that will be given, and of course the the the, the, the fresh, I mean the, the the experiences that they will bring uh, to be yeah, to a large extent will will, will uh, see us through the security challenges. I, I can go on and on positive aspect, and the positive aspect in the first place is that when you look at it also, uh, given their antecedents. First and foremost, some of the services they have known them for uh, in, since when they were in secondary school. Because yes, two of I, them were, and I want to uh, get to that boys. point, General so, General Usman. Yes. I, I, I want to make a point on what you just raised. Uh, the newly appointed Chief of uh, Naval Staff, 
uh, Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, and uh, also uh, the Chief of Air Staff, uh, Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar, uh, were ex boys of the Nigerian Military School. They were NMS 82, and uh, they were also part of the regular course of the Nigerian Defense Academy. In uh, course 39, uh, did, does this help in any way for interagency? Corporation, and I also want I stand to be corrected. Is it the first time that you have two at least two service chiefs that are course mates from the Nigerian Defense Academy? Yeah, well, well this is not the first time. Uh, there were several instances, and uh, for one on time, I may not be able to call them. But mm. uh, uh, addressing the other question, it is very, very important. Uh, just yesterday, I was at the headquarters one division. Army. And uh, we are, I presented a paper on, uh, you know, the need for uh, inspired collaboration, collaboration and coordination of the security architecture in dealing with security, in internal security challenges. So it is issue that is very important. And the more you are associated with someone, the better, in the sense that you, you, you don't have to go through the bureaucratic bottlenecks of, you know, taking, um, uh, oh, yeah. what do you call it, uh, you, you know, call, calling for collaboration and support. What's happened? Take, for instance, the immediate past chief of army staff and the immediate past uh, inspector general of police, you know, where at a certain point in time, well, the, the IP then was the commissioner of police in Edo State. He was also the uh, General Aya was four brigade commander. So by the time he was appointed, he had no problem whatsoever because mm. they have known themselves. They were members of the State uh, Security Council and they have worked together. And in most instances, I think he is a fellow of the National Defense College. So you can always relate with each other. He had uh, shared common experience in terms of training, in terms of uh, you know, conferences in terms of education and so on and so forth. But that notwithstanding, you know, the, the system is so good in the sense that there are you know, guidelines that will help them. And I'm so happy with this kind of relationship in the sense that we are going to have that what was lacking. That we, not that it is lacking, but we need to have improved, you know, synergy of effort, collaboration and cooperation. Remember the acting controller of immigration raised this issue of collaboration or support from the other security agencies. So that is key. That is very important. Mm -hmm. And of course, the national security advisor will be the clearing house, especially of uh, intelligence and information, so that he advise the president. The president will give the right strategic directives for okay. all the service commanders. They will act, and so so it, it is a gamut of so many advantages. You know, rather than you know the the, the what do you call it, the disadvantages. Okay. And uh, we look forward to a better and improved security in this country with these changes. Thank you very much, uh, General Usman. Uh, now, uh, um, Commodore Abimbola, the appointment of Malam Nuhu Ribadu as a national security advisor is an interesting choice, uh, looking at the history of holders of the national security advisor, which have mostly been ex-servicemen uh, of the army branch. Uh, Malam Nuhu Ribadu was the pioneer chairman of the uh, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Now, uh, Commodore, could you provide insights into his background and expertise that make him suitable uh, for the role of National Security Advisor. Well, thank you very much. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, furor on the uh, preceding the final uh, selection and appointment of uh, Malam Nuhu Ribadu as a national security advisor. Uh, you will uh, agree with me that over the years, uh, the military had uh, occupied this office, uh, not exclusively, because uh, Malaribadu will not be the first uh, coming from the police background to be appointed as national security advisor. And you will go back into history you also discover that uh, that office of security advisor 
after it had been treated, we had a, a, a plethora of a, a retired a military a generals who, who had succeeded uh, one another. But uh, going back to the uh, look at the competencies of uh, uh, Malano Ribadu, uh, there is no doubt that uh, Malano Ribadu uh, has been in the system uh, for quite a while, having uh, twice uh, served in the EFCC. You know, if he had not been competent, he wouldn't have been brought back to head the EFCC. Even though the EFCC might be said to be not as a, a, the architecture of the EFCC might not have been as wide as what is expected to do. But I want to see that uh, the uh, sel his selection must have uh, been uh, informed by certain parameters and duties of uh, the uh, national security advisor uh, is simply to coordinate the other sister services and sit as uh, chairman of the Joint Intelligence uh, Board, among other uh, responsibilities. Uh, for a man uh, of uh, Malam Nu's uh, pedigree, uh, he finally left the police as an AIG. He was in uh, the Institute of Policy and Strategic cool. Studies, and of course, if not for Kuru, if not for some uh, political or maybe some issues uh, of, uh, which I don't want to talk about on this program, he had gone through a very good uh, run of the mill. And of course, one important thing is having uh, the integrity and having that uh, capacity to, to do that, act in a way that will be uh, agreeable to others who will, uh, who he expected to lead. And then when you look at the selection of new services chief, you will also see that uh, these people are coming from a different, totally different generation from uh, Malam Nu Rivadu. Uh, so I presume that uh, Malam Nu Rivadu's uh, exposure, experience, and of course, uh, he has been a very long standing loyalist of the president and commander in chief. And these are very important uh, uh, components of the selection process. Mm. Now I believe that uh, moving along, he should be uh, in a good stead to lead the, because he's not going to be a service chief. He will only take advices and inputs from the services chiefs and IG. So his, his, his business is to collate, coordinate, and, and, and communicate with the, the commander in chief. Yes. And communicate with the commander in chief. Yes. Thank, Thank you very much, uh, Commodore Ayuba. Uh, now, General Osman, you were the image maker of the Nigerian army, and uh, you would agree with me as a communicator that public perception plays a significant role in governance. How are President Tinubu's appointments, okay, um, which, how are President Tinubu's appointments and retirement in the security sector being perceived by the Nigerian public. What are the expectations of ordinary citizens regarding the new government's ability to enhance national security? Okay, um, I believe we have lost uh, General Osman. So I'll just direct this question uh, to Commodore Ayuba. Now, um, I'll take it again. President Tinubu's appointment and retirement in the security sector, uh, how are the Nigerian public, how do they perceive and receive this uh, news? And what are the expectations of ordinary citizens regarding the government's ability to enhance national security? Thank you, Wenga. Uh, you will see the lightning speed in which the Tinubu administration has uh, uh, con conducted itself since uh, swearing in on May 29, uh, barely three weeks plus. We can see the speed at which uh, the government is uh, reacting and to different uh, issues of uh, concerning the nation. 
uh, the economy. Uh, we are also looking at the character and quality of those who have been holding positions that have been attempts to rejig, and also there's been uh, some attempts to allow uh, the security services to investigate some cases that have hitherto been hanging uh, before the, this administration uh, took office. You will see that all these uh, issues being uh, given attention have uh, di di direct impact on national security. Take the economy, for instance. Take the state of uh, uh, the, 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 the cash crunch that almost uh, brought every Nigerian down to mm -hmm. uh, bellies and uh, uh, inspired by the policies that were uh, put in place by the, the now former CBN. And those are things that will directly deal with the uh, impact negatively on the economic security. And of course, with, with, with the issue of uh, fuel uh, uh, removal of subsidy, uh, we, we all know that uh, that would only impact on the uh, cost of transportation and then it will affect food security. And all these components of uh, security will all together aggregate to form national security. So I believe that the government has hit the ground running and uh, it surely has a plan. And that plan is being followed because nowadays, if you don't pay attention to um, news news uh, media information you will be doing one thing you only for you to hear that there's another <laughs> breaking news yes and sometimes you will find yourself uh, being left behind because lots and lots of changes are coming on this symbolizes a government that is ready from day one to impact and for the first time from my by my own assessment and uh, for all like uh, my memory can serve me this is the first time you will have a, a government, a political administration, that will say things that they will and, and mean it, because this has been quite lacking uh, in the, the past. If you go to the manifesto of uh, the this government and the APC, you will begin to see that they are serious about most of the things that have been said. So well, I'm hoping that. Uh, with enough public support and determination. And of course, uh, when you also look at the fray, the torrent of visits into uh, the, the villa, villa, especially from the international uh, uh, community. Uh, last, I think yesterday or so, the worldwide uh, uh, head of uh, Airtel was there, Bill Gates was there with uh, Liko Dangote and some other people. This uh, suggests that uh, uh, we are beginning to see, uh, we build confidence in uh, foreign direct investors, and that may trigger a, a flurry of uh, inflow of uh, foreign direct investment to Nigeria, thereby shoring up uh, uh, reserves, which okay. uh, will also affect the, the value of the Naira and uh, make, uh, inspire uh, investor confidence. So we are beginning to see uh, uh, a situation where Nigeria seems to be going back from uh, a stand proportion to full uh, ahead proportion, if I will use okay. my naval balance. Uh, and this is just in three weeks. So. Uh, a lot of people are hopeful that the government will keep up this uh, momentum of uh, positive uh, change and also taking the hard decisions. Now, Commodore Ayuba, when you talk about Nigeria, there's always uh, the... We, we operate in a low-trust environment. There's issues of corruption, which is the big C, uh, the elephant in the room. The issue of corruption has often been linked to security challenges in Nigeria. The security sector is not left out of this. Now... How can President Tinubu's administration address corruption within the security sector and ensure that resources are utilized effectively to combat insecurity? This is a commander-in-chief uh, that has so many issues. Uh, Nigeria has so many issues bedeviling it. And uh, he can't micromanage everyone. So 
how best can you ensure that resources are utilized effectively to combat insecurity and reduce uh, corruption in the armed forces to the barest minimum? Thank you very much, Gwenga. Uh, you, 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 you've uh, mentioned part of it in, in, in the passing. Uh, the issue of micro manage, managing the armed forces uh, should not arise. But uh, I know that uh, when you set goals uh, or targets, uh, if you, for instance, uh, uh, the president uh, 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 allocates certain funds to some service, say uh, Air Force or Army or whatever, one has been uh, allocated funds specifically for security purposes. Of course, the, that, that fund must have been meant for something specific and uh, measurable so that uh, by the time you, you say that within three months, if you receive uh, X number of uh, uh, equipment, you will be able to capture, say, recapture, say, three, four local governments mm -hmm. uh, in three months. So uh, one of the easiest ways of uh, monitoring that will be to, first of all, uh, put uh, a supervisory uh, link uh, to um, ensure that weekly or monthly or uh, bi-weekly or monthly, there are reports being sent on the progress of such uh, uh, assignments. And uh, you know that also that the Security Council meets often. So all those briefings and how much you have spent uh, should be uh, uh, accounted for. Well, I also learned uh, when I visited uh, Singapore some years ago that uh, uh, during the uh, era of Link, Link Man Yu, that uh, uh, budgets are based on needs and uh, priorities of government. You don't just budget for everything. So there's and no I excess, you, we'll, there's no excess no funds excess, laid yes. around. Yes. Funds so laid around, yes, exactly. And uh, if you said, uh, if you are, uh, need to construct 10 kilometers of road, hypothetically, funds are put behind that uh, 10 kilometers. Uh, Link by you himself, we make sure that every week he goes drives on the road, the ones we've completed, and uh, measure it by himself. So sometimes, when you don't throw too much money around, because sometimes uh, a lot of monies are, have been, have been uh, taken out of government coffers under the pretext of one uh, program, equipment purchase, or the other that never sometimes even gets to the services chiefs. Uh, to even start with. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the supervision should be uh, almost uh, nearly uh, direct. Uh, and that uh, is what the government needs to do to ensure that at no time will funds be released or taken out of public coffers without uh, being utilized for the purpose for which it was taken. And there's so much of such monies that have been around to the extent that people now take monies in billions of naira, mm. and with so much ease that one begins to wonder whether truly we are still in Nigeria. This okay. is uh, my position on this, young girl. Thank you very much, uh, Commodore Ayuba. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll continue our conversation. We still have uh, Commodore Mbola Ayuba and Brigadier General Sani Usman uh, retired uh, on the conversation uh, tonight. Do stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick timeout. <music> Welcome back to Politics HQ at New Central Television. And we've been discussing the appointment of new service chiefs and its implication uh, for security in Nigeria. And joining me uh, tonight on this discussion, I have retired Brigadier General uh, Sari Usman, uh, former director of the Army Public Relations, and also Commodore Abimbola Ayuba, international security at risk management consultant. Both are joining me live from the nation's capital, Abuja. I would like to begin the second half uh, with General Usman. Uh, you were the former image maker of the Nigerian uh, Army, and uh, you are a distinguished communicator. Just last week, 
Um, Asari Dokubu visited uh, the commander in chief, uh, President Bolane Tinubu, and he alleged that, you know, the Nigerian military was involved in all theft or is involved in all theft. And I have to state uh, that there are other reports and other people that have collaborated, uh, corroborated this uh, allegation. Now, my question to you, Jenna, is are there any discernible economic, social, or political factors that might drive military personnel into engaging in such an illicit uh, activity? And what's, what, what, what are your thoughts on this allegation? Yeah, first and foremost, I'm not a criminal, so I won't know whether there is any justification for crimes, you know? Because those activities you have mentioned, they are at variance with military service and duties as well. Uh, it is quite unfortunate that he made such allegations, and uh, uh, I really don't want to dwell into it because beyond that, there were so many other allegations that do not really uh, add up. For instance, the issue of you know securing Kaduna, Abuja Road, and uh, Bagamin some parts of the northeastern state. And uh, sincerely speaking, that is quite untrue because even yesterday I was in Kaduna and I know the concerted effort. As a matter of fact, the, the new chief of army staff was, uh, uh, you know, in 82 division and from there he was moved to one division and he did marvelously well. And there were evidences beyond ordinable doubt he led into the patrol, into the enclave of some of these bandits. And of course, I know uh, the new chief of defense staff was at one point uh, uh, the theater commander operation uh, had in Kai. And of course, we have had what has never happened anywhere in the world. You have uh, over a thousand. In fact, two weeks ago, I was also in Maiduguru and I went to the repentant Boko Haram camp. So I know the truth about some of these things. So I have no idea about what he was talking about, you know, oil theft and what have you. But I can tell you, that the allegations, uh, you know, I, I think they are far from truth, especially as regards curing some part of this country. And I begin to wonder who actually contracted him to do that kind of thing. You know, is it in the class of Wagner and the South African, you know, uh, executive outcomes? And we know uh, contractors of that nature, they can go to ridiculous extent to say a lot of things, but it's quite unfortunate. And uh, I think uh, what they were saying, uh, I think is quite right in the sense that uh, uh, let him be forthright and come up with concrete evidence about this allegation that he's making. But it is quite unfortunate that people who have been making sacrifices, doing the best they could, that uh, you come and give a space, uh, you know, sweeping statement about that. Okay, thank you, uh, Gerald Smith. Staying with you, Nigeria's youth population is a valuable asset, but unemployment and lack of opportunities uh, can contribute to social unrest and criminal activities. How can President Tinubu's administration prioritize youth empowerment and job creation as part of its security agenda? Because there's a saying that the idle mind is the devil's playground. This is a very important in the sense, and this is something that we've been advocating. And uh, I kept on saying, uh, God has blessed this country beyond uh, our imagination. It is not the blessing in terms of mineral resources, but there is one other important resource, which is the human resource. The resilience and ingenuity of an average Nigerian is awesome. And of course, if you look at the total population of this country, let's and uh, the 200 million you are talking about, 72 percent are the youth. And what extent have we uh, empowered the youth to bring the best they could? And if you look at also some of the, uh, you know, security challenges are being perpetrated by the youth. Look at the secessionist ag ag agitations and look at even the banditry, the, the kidnapping. Mostly it is youth. And you hardly you see anybody above 40, you know, in this kind of level of crime. And of course, I may refer to cyber crimes or what of you. So I, I think it is important that uh, we should uh, uh, give empowerment, you know, uh, to, to the youth. 
create opportunities for them to unleash positive aspects of uh, themselves. And sometimes ago, I think about three or four weeks ago, the Skating Federation of Nigeria had uh, a kind of mini rally. And I said they should not be despondent. There are so many things that they could do with their life. But of course, the government has to create an enabling environment. Mm -hmm. it, you know, in terms of education, in terms of economic opportunities. And look at it even. In most instances, one of the menace that they would have assist to a large extent the banditry and kidnapping, especially in the Northwest, is the unholy activities of the informant. Sometimes, you know, this informant actually they are lured into this criminality unknowingly because they were looking for opportunities. Somebody has not seen 50,000 Naira. And of course, all he, what he is looking for to start up the business is just 50,000 Naira. And the bandit will come with 100,000 Naira. And of course, you will volunteer information. So uh, there are a lot of things that need to be done, you know, to ensure that we integrate the youth into mainstream of economic, social economic activities of this country. And I can rest assure you, Nigeria will be better off for it. So it is very important that, uh, you know, the youth are taken. And I'm so happy. In fact, when. Uh, Komodo Aiwo was making analysis of the changes. When you look at right from the transnational security advisor up to, you know, the controller general of customs, the service chiefs, they are a new generation of people. Mm. Yes, they could be in their 50s or 40s, as the case may be, but it's far from what we were used to in, uh, in the past. So you can see that uh, they are taking the right step in the right direction. But my appeal to you uh, is, is that Look, there is so much, so much good things about Nigeria. Let us embrace peace and, uh, you know, opportunities that are there. I can tell you, Nigeria is one of the best countries to live in because I had the privilege of traveling outside. There is no better place like home. And you can see that most of our problems are environmental. And that is where the responsibility uh, is now on the leadership to ensure that they create this enabling environment for this youth to thrive so that Nigeria can, uh, you know, be in the right place in the Committee of Nations in terms of social economic development and social welfare and so on. Thank you, uh, General Usman. Now, back to you, Commodore Ayuba. You were in the Navy, uh, so let's uh, zoom in on the Nigerian Navy. Rear Admiral E.A. Ogala has been named as the new Chief of Naval Staff. Uh, considering Nigeria's maritime security challenges, what specific initiatives and reforms can you introduce to strengthen Nigeria's naval capabilities and safeguard its coastal waters? I also want to add that uh, not on this program, we've spoken uh, on different occasions, and you did uh, testify uh, to the uh, rearmament and also the strides that uh, the last administration uh, made in terms of strengthening uh, the Nigerian Navy. So in, th with this in mind, uh, what else can be done to safeguard uh, naval capabilities uh, and also uh, Nigeria's territorial integrity? Thank you very much, Ringa. The issues uh, concerning the uh, management of uh, naval assets uh, and also personnel that will be selected to work within the uh, maritime space moving on to be consistent. Uh, you know, the naval force uh, operates mainly, particularly uh, in terms of uh, uh, training and manpower development. It depends more on uh, apprenticeship of uh, officers, especially when you are moving from the junior ranks uh, to the levels, intermediate rungs, you will depend on uh, uh, mentoring, particularly in terms of uh, uh, professional activities, say uh, uh, keeping watch, watches on the, on the various uh, warships, handling weapons, and also uh, planning passages, and also uh, learning of uh, uh, several uh, tactics that are required to carry out our policing role. So, but uh, effectively, I, I, I want to uh, seize the opportunity to congratulate uh, the new chief of naval staff, and also uh, also he also knows that uh, uh, his predecessor in office 
have done incredibly well. Even the one before him uh, have uh, put a lot of measures in place, but uh, much more, he also has been a member of the command team that have worked uh, at Nava headquarters. And of course, what needs to be done now is to also uh, not uh, throw away the, the, uh, all the allegations that have been coming in, even though I know that most of them are frivolous, uh, coming from uh, my experiences in various uh, uh, joint uh, tax forces that were meant to safeguard their oil assets in the Niger Delta. Some of the, the stories and allegations that we hear now are virtually very frivolous and mischievous and to be taken with a pinch of salt. Hmm. Uh, the Navy is perhaps the most loyal of the three arms of services. Uh, and, uh, I can defend that anywhere. The coastline of Nigeria is fast. The, the tax given to the Navy is much more beyond the, uh, what are the assets that are presently in, a, in a Asna can do. So the new chief of NASA staff uh, should uh, uh, begin to pursue uh, the uh, acquisition of uh, more capable platforms that can keep the seas, especially within the Gulf scope of, of uh, mm. uh, Gulf of Guinea, and also continue to encourage uh, international cooperation, maritime cooperation like his predecessor have been doing. Uh, it's an opportunity for him to also ensure that he deals with the ratings uh, and officers with a lot of uh, uh, equity and make sure that he may select the right uh, quality and character of officers to deliver on that mandate. And uh, having been a directing staff uh, in the defense college, which is the apex uh, military uh, uh, institution in Nigeria. Uh, he knows uh, its onions, and I want to wish him all the best. But uh, talking about piracy, the issue of piracy has reduced to the barest minimum in the last two years, and uh, that has to be sustained. But if there are issues of uh, oil, uh, stealing of oil, still uh, going on within the creeks and internal waters, and then they should work along with other services to ensure that we, we put this to a, a final halt so that we begin to realize the increased production on our oil, of our oil, uh, meet up our oil quota, and also thereby generating more uh, uh, foreign exchange for yes. the country. Thank you, Commodore Yubab. I would like to bring in uh, General uh, Musa into the conversation. Now, as the newly appointed Chief of Army Staff, uh, Major General T.A. Lagbaja, he will play a pivotal role in shaping the direction of the Army. Uh, the theatre has changed in the last few years. Uh, Boko Haram is not, is not holding territory anymore. Uh, what we have now is a sort of asymmetrical uh, warfare, their capacity has been degraded to a certain level. So what steps can the new Chief of Army Staff take to enhance the Army's capabilities and address internal security threats like uh, the secessionist threats in the East and also issues of banditry? And I'm not sure if uh, kidnapping is also under the purview of the Army. Well, I, I must tell you that it is. And, uh... I had made reference to that when you asked me that question and uh, about what, uh, uh, and I'm so happy about uh, what uh, Komodo Ayuba has said, the allegations against the military, particularly the Navy and the Army were frivolous and unfounded, simply because the evidences are there to show that they have been doing marvelously well. So for you to turn around to do that is quite unfortunate. Now, going back to what you have said in respect of uh, the new chief of army staff, remember, he was the general officer commanding uh, 82 division and later the premier division, one division, 
and uh, before he became chief of operations. So he has his fingers on top of the operational activities, not of, you know, of the Nigerian army. And uh, given his wealth of experience uh, in the Northwest also, you can understand even though Boko Haram has attenuated and sufficiently degraded, uh, there is still issue of tackling, you know, banditry and kidnapping, especially in North Central and the Northwest. So just like um, uh, the, the chief of the new chief of defense staff that had been at the theater, I believe they will bring all this experience to bear. And you know the Air Force have been doing a marvelous job supporting the operation, Adar and Daji, Operation World Punch, and the rest of them. So these are the issues that uh, will concern them. And most importantly, uh, apart from dealing with these uh, security challenges, they cannot do it single-handedly. There should be improved, you know, cooperation and collaboration among the services and the other uh, components of the security architecture in the country. It is not just also the security architecture. There is one important component that was making reference to one of the greatest uh, resources in the country, the human resource. So to what extent are you integrating or taking into cognizance the other components of Nigerian society, the average Nigerian, the citizen? What role is he or she going to play in dealing with the security challenges that we have in this country? And that is why uh, the whole society approach is equally very important. And that, therefore, there should be a kind of collaboration among the new uh, services. And of course, the Office of the National Security Advisor in all security aid, taking about correctional service, road safety, and so on, and immigration and the customs services. Because some of these security challenges, they overlap and they cut across the mandate of uh, some of these uh, security uh, okay. agencies. Thank you, General Smith. Now, Commodore Ayuba, if you can, in less than a minute, I'll really appreciate because we're fast uh, run out of time. Uh, now, the appointments have been made, and Nigerians are uh, waiting to see how effective uh, they will be. Now, given the multifaceted nature of security challenges in Nigeria, what benchmarks or indicators can be used to assess the performance and success of President Tinubu's uh, security policies and this new appointment? How will the government track progress and uh, make necessary adjustments to achieve its security objectives? Thankfully, the Office of the National Security Advisor is well equipped to monitor and coordinate uh, the issues of security uh, and there are lots of facilities that have been in place there over the years uh, up to uh, uh, live uh, uh, the devices that can view the landscape from that particular center, and also the uh, National Counterterrorism uh, Center that was recently commissioned mm -hmm. is also uh, having a, a, a lot of uh, capacity to simultaneously also monitor uh, events. And in all the services uh, headquarters, for example, in the Naval headquarters, you have the Falcon Eye which uh, is also uh, can be from Abuja here, yeah, you can see what's going on at sea. And also the, the office of the CNC is equipped with similar facilities to view, even from laptops, what is going on in several parts of mm. the national uh, space. So what uh, we need to begin to look out for is uh, whether people are beginning to return to their local governments, their villages, particularly in the northwest, not not east, not central, particularly, mm -hmm. and that uh, we are able to also make progress uh, in areas of uh, freeing some of our captive uh, children, children still in captivity, uh, because there are lots of them still being held yes. in captivity, okay. and that also uh, we thankfully. The oil petroleum uh, 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 has been uh, the regime has been deregulated. All those issues of smuggling and uh, helps to power okay. 
uh, criminality across the border and foil uh, have been uh, 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 nipped in the bud. Mm. And uh, the pressure on the dollar will also reduce. So we okay. are, uh, thank, thank you that very much, uh, Commodore Abin Bola Ayubab. I'm uh, afraid we have three to... Three to six months. Uh, I'm afraid we have to go now. I'd like to say a big thank you uh, to our esteemed guest tonight, uh, retired Brigadier General Sani Kukosheka Usman, uh, former Director, Army Public Relations, and also Commodore Abimbola Ayuba, retired International Security Risk Management Consultant. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, speaking to you both, and thanks for your time and contribution on the program tonight. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.